Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together live here on Facebook, where we examine headlines from uh, our country, our city, our state. We examine your questions, your comments, your adventures, my own. We combine all this information so that we can hope for a more connected life here in Puerto Vallarta as a community of English-speaking locals. It is always a pleasure to see you. And today is Monday, January 31st. It's the last day of January. And the last day of January, yes. Which means that I don't have to sing that song that's been like an, an earworm through the whole month, which is that song, January, from the group Player. They had two hits. It was a Scottish band. One was called Magic, and the other one was called January. They were both recorded by Alan Parsons, which is more information that you needed to have about music so early in the morning. Anyhow, um, let's see. Let's see. We have all kinds of news today. We have, uh, oh dear, we have news about vaccine campaigns. We have news about COVID cases, of course. We have more drama from Seapal. We have um, news from Guadalajara. We have shady news about a, a, host, a hospital that has been singled out by the U.S. government as being nasty. A hospital in Mexico singled out by the U.S. government. We got to love those countries that love to stick their nose in other countries' business. Um, we have news. We have funny news about uh, our former mayor, making proposals. We have important news about Airbnb and a little bit of a, uh, a report of how my day went yesterday going out into town and going into the Rise Talent competition, which was a lot of fun. Um, so we have a little bit of here, there, and everywhere. But before we dive into all that stuff, as always, we'd like to welcome all new friends, all of the, all of you who are watching live and would like to let us know that you're watching for the first time, just write the word new in your comment and we'll be so happy to give you a nice little welcome. We'd like to welcome our, our YouTube friends who don't get to comment live, don't get to comment at all, but still we love you. We appreciate the fact that you follow us and we appreciate your thumbs up. And last but not least, of course, um, if you have something truly important that you wish to share or comment or you're looking for a reaction, uh, please add a capital letter Q to your comment and we'll be looking for those in the second half of the broadcast. So let's dive in. Well, for starters, as we've been announcing, today is the beginning of a major uh, vaccination campaign here in Puerto Vallarta because it is a campaign for booster shots for folks in their 40s and their 50s. It's also a campaign for first-time doses for anyone that is 18 or older. And it's also a campaign for folks that are looking for their second shot and are 18 or older. So this is a, a big campaign for everyone or all the people that I mentioned. The campaign is going on between now and Thursday at both the Naval Hospital in La Lija. You know the drill. If you're looking to get a vaccine, you have to print out your pre-registration. And of course, as always, we have the website for the pre-registration included in the article. Moving right along, uh, the number of cases in Jalisco seems to be on the rise. A few weeks ago, we were mentioning uh, more than several consecutive days with 2,500 new cases. Yesterday, Jalisco reported 5,212 new cases throughout the state. That is a first. And uh, in Puerto Vallarta, unfortunately, there were 1,645 new cases in the entire last week with an average of new cases, uh, daily new cases of 235, something we have not seen in Puerto Vallarta since the beginning of the pandemic. The good news is that even with the rise of cases, there is a slight decrease in hospitalizations in our state. But there's this interesting fact that I found from another article. According to the Federal Secretary of Health, of those COVID cases that required hospitalization, eight out of 10 had to do with people that have not gotten 
a vaccine. So it is important to keep this in mind. If you think the vaccines don't work, please think again. Vaccines are good. They're good and they're important. And um, if you get an opportunity to get vaccinated during the current campaigns or any of the campaigns that are coming up, please take this into account. And now we move on to some Seapal drama. As you know, um, well, many parts of the city have been suffering from water shortages and Seapal seems to be trying to make things happen for them in terms of all the damage that they suffered through Hurricane Nora. And then we recently heard that they were threatening to go on strike. That is the union of Seapal workers. Well, they're getting some answers, which is a good thing. One of the things that the workers requested was a salary increase of 8.5%. This has been approved. So this is a good thing. But apparently, that's not all that is going on. Rumors continue to persist uh, that uh, the union would go on strike during the first minute of today. Uh, and direct, direct, director Salvador Llamas has indicated that most of the noise and most of the uh, grumblings going on in Seapal these days have been generated by syndicate leader or union leader Juan Andres Aguirre, who for better or worse has been acc accustomed to all kinds of commodities that are questionably legal and questionably corrupt. And the organization is saying we will no longer um, allow for any of this to happen. And this is what is going on. Now, does this mean that if you're suffering from water problems, they're going to be resolved tomorrow? I don't know. But um, just know that the organization is not sitting around and uh, they're trying to make things better for all of us. Uh, and that is a good thing. Moving right along, I want to let you know that uh, the new uh, beltway in the city of Guadalajara, Mi Macro Periferico, or My Macro Beltway, has been um, inaugurated. It was inaugurated yesterday. It is the longest in the country. It features a, a state-of-the-line uh, public transportation system that 300,000 people are expected to ride each day. Uh, the new route is um, has 42 stations along 41 kilometers in the city of Guadalajara. It doesn't go completely around just yet, but it is a major, major increase to the wonderful uh, system of public transportation that the city of Guadalajara has. If you want to find out more about it, there's, a, there's an official website, which, by the way, includes not only all the transportation options available in Guadalajara, but it also has information about Puerto Vallarta and the fact that the same card that you use for public transportation here can also be used in the city of Guadalajara and vice versa. Um, the Puerto Vallarta section features places in the city where you can um, get uh, more, more uh, you can recharge your transportation card, and this is all very, very good stuff. Let's see what else do we have. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let us hope that this never happens in Puerto Vallarta because it's happening in Cabo San Lucas. Um, the United States, as I mentioned earlier, has released an unusual sanitary alert, not having to do with a city or a state, but this one has to do with a specific hospital in Cabo San Lucas called St. Luke's Hospital. According to the United States government, the hospital uh, there have been enough complaints about the hospital from American users that the hospital is extremely expensive. The hospital does not present um, itemized line items in their bills. They obstruct, apparently, medical transportation requests to other hospitals, and they refuse to release patients until they pay, and then they hold on to patient information. So I don't know if any of this is true or false. I don't, we don't have both sides of the story, but let us hope that such an unusual advisory is never released for a hospital in Puerto Vallarta. I'm not saying that anything unusual is going on in hospitals in Puerto Vallarta either, but what a horrible thing to realize that, um, that the U.S. government has released this very particular advisory. We don't know if the St. Luke's Hospital is going to prepare a response, but it'll be interesting if they do. 
La, uh, what is next? What's next? What's next? Oh, let us take a look at the weather before we continue with a few other items that we prepared for you this morning. <laughs> now that's funny and not funny. I removed my music from Spotify because they refused my repeated request to launch Joe Rogan into the sun. Now that deserves one of these. There you go. If you don't know what that is about, um, then please write the word Spotify in your comment and I'll fill you in. This is one that I have been following. But for now, let's concentrate on our weather. It is 25 degrees, feels like 26. Humidity is low at 47% and our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 78%. I mean, 78 degrees at present time. Our weather forecast for the beginning of the week says we're going to have a clear day today with a high temperature of 29, low temperature 16. Tomorrow, Tuesday, another clear day with a high temperature 28, low temperature 16. And Wednesday, we can expect a clear day again with a high temperature of 28, low temperature of 17. So we're looking at a nice weather, a nice beginning of the week, and that is a very good thing. Moving right along with our leisurely or less important um, uh, headlines. Actually, I see at least one Spotify. I see two Spotify's here. So let me tell you what is going on. Um, Two important musicians have released, have asked to remove their music from um, from Spotify because Spotify hosts a, a podcast by Joe Rogan, and Joe Rogan has featured several um, artists, uh, several guests that have shared questionable information about COVID and vaccination and this, that, and the other. And um, two musicians, it was Johnny Mitchell and I forget the other musicians, Neil Young. Yes, Neil Young and, and Johnny Mitchell have written to Spotify and they've said, hey, Spotify, either you remove these podcasts or you remove our music. So the music of these two musicians has be, have been removed. But now Spotify is getting all kinds of uh, correspondence saying, hey, you guys, you know what's up with the, the what's up with the podcast so it is definitely um it is definitely uh, causing some trouble for spotify and uh we'll we'll see how this is going to play out moving down the line in the meantime we're going to now continue with some of our other information uh which has to do let us start with the fact that we are halfway through the present sanitary mandate here in the state of jalisco in which bar goers are expected to present proof of vaccination to enter venues. It is good to report that according to the bars in the Malecon, the Malecon Bar Association, they are not um, registering big losses because of this mandate. According to them, the, va the vast majority of Mexican nationals going to the bars are quite happy to present their vaccination certificate at the door. So it's no big deal. Where the problem seems to be happening is in bars that cater to mostly international uh, uh, bar goers. And it seems to be that it is the international bar goers uh, that are more reluctant to present vaccination proof. And I say seem to be because I don't want to be shaded because I'm reporting these this information uh moving right along oh this one i have to share it with you because it totally made me laugh and this is just more for context for you guys more than anything else former mayor and current director of beach tourism arturo davalos has um commented on the fact that the median strips along francisco medina Asensio are looking a little sad and they require some water so he is suggesting well we should install a sprinkler system along the median so that the plants can look better and present a better picture for tourism. Well, that made me laugh because, what was it? Maybe 10 or 12 years ago, a whole sprinkler system was installed along Francisco Medina Asensio. And for weeks, uh, the installation process blocked traffic along one of the lanes and it was just chaotic. Was it ever used? Never. 
it was never turned on. And if it was turned on, we, we, I don't even remember if it was turned on. Uh, so the point that I'm trying to make is of how, for better or worse, some of our, our, our local mandatories and our local administrations will come up with these amazing projects and they'll fund them and they'll take place. But then, you know, the projects are not used. So there is a sprinkler system company somewhere out there that pocketed a lot of money and maybe gave a percentage of that money to a former local tourism administrator or local mayor. Um, so for Davalos to come forth now and suggest that the work gets done, it's like, you know, it's already been done. I hope I'm explaining that properly um, because it's, it's just the kind of corruption that tends to happen in our local administrations, unfortunately. Moving right along, and this is good news, I think. Last week we reported on the agreement um, that Airbnb has established with the local government not to start collecting the tourism tax. I was uh, corrected, and thankfully, that uh, Airbnb is already collecting the tourism tax for properties in our state, but now Airbnb will direct those taxes to uh, back to our government. And uh, this news item indicates that according to the Tourism Bureau here in Puerto Vallarta, this will translate into 5 million pesos per month that Airbnb is going to return to Puerto Vallarta alone per month for better tourism promotion. So that's good news. That's very, very good news. And let's see, what else do we have? Oh, yes, I have to tell you. Well, I don't have to, but I'd like to tell you of my afternoon yesterday um, going to the talent competition at The Palm. Uh, it was absolutely fun to get out and about. Actually, my fun started on Saturday. I had a great lunch with dear friends, and it was just so nice to charge the, the friendship battery and the musician battery. Two of them are musicians, so it was just lovely. And then yesterday, I went to the talent show at uh, The Palm. It was at 3 o'clock, so it was a wonderful thing, a matinee, which had me back at home by 6.30. Um, I was trying to make decisions as to where to have lunch before the event, and uh, I discovered I think I have a new vice. I have a vice for, for baked potatoes because I was thinking, well, I should go to Tacos Revolucion for lunch. And when I noticed that Tacos Revolucion has a baked potato in their menu and, you know, baked potatoes are perfect because of this, this, you know, it's a one handed food item. So it was absolutely wonderful. I got to um, Tacos Revolucion. And if you have not been there, they serve three types of salsa at your table with tortilla chips. The mild one is avocado base. The super hot one is uh, habanero with uh, pineapple. And the medium is actually quite mild and it is so fucking good. It's like you almost want to eat it by the spoonful. Anyhow, I had my, my, my uh, baked potato, which was to die for. And much to my surprise, there were a few people that you know, recognize me. But most importantly, Albert Friss. I met our Albert Friss, who has been, uh, who, you know, if we had awards for best travelers, um, the one for this month would probably go to Albert because Albert has been, as I mentioned last week, he's been going from restaurant to restaurant that we've recommended. And he's branched out thanks to our restaurant uh, conversations and our maps. And it, it was just wonderful to meet you, Albert. And, 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 you know, I take my hat off for you because, you know, you are not a tourist. You are a traveler. You are a voyager. You are here trying to immerse yourself uh, in our lives, in our culture, in, our, in, in everything wonderful that Puerto Vallarta has to offer. So that was absolutely amazing. Um, then, of course, I made my way to the Palm where they asked for my proof of vaccination. Thank you very much. I was happy to show it. And then, of course, uh, we had five contestants. One of those contestants was, of course, our very own Kathleen from Lix, who was very brave in making a, a comedy routine. She showed up on stage with this ice cooler. And inside of the ice cooler, she had different wigs uh, that she used to portray different um, 
different musicians and she was absolutely bold and courageous and funny because everybody else was there to sing or to perform. And I was really, really excited to see some of the performers. Um, let's see, how do I say this without being shady? Uh, because we don't want to be shady. It was nice to see several performers uh, that competed, for several contestants that competed with, um, uh, with live music. That was nice to see. It was nice to see that at least one contestant sang in Spanish, um, whereas others whose native language was not English sang in English, and at times it was kind of confusing to hear what they were trying to say. And it was nice to see that the first prize uh, for the semifinals went to a local band. It's, it was the only band that performed like a whole band. The band, hold on, it is called Eyes on Earth. Why a local band has a name in English is a mystery, but that's what they're called. They were amazing. They were so tight. We asked where they are performing, and they said that they perform regularly at a place called El Patio, which I believe is in Colonia Cinco de Diciembre. I'm not sure, but I'm definitely going to keep my eyes open for this band, Eyes on Earth, because they were really tight. They were absolutely amazing, and um, and it was just, it was fun to be out and about, and it was fun to see a successful event. I was invited to be a judge in the big final, which is going to take place on February 20th at Teatro Vallarta, and it'll, play, it'll be a pleasure to be there to encourage musicians and to see, you know, what's going on. And this is pretty much my weekend report, and this is pretty much what we have for you today. Let me rewind the comment tape just to see what everybody is up to this morning. Of course, we appreciate all your wonderful good mornings, as always. Um, Alan keeps counting down, 39 days to PV. Oh, and of course, I spent the weekend cleaning the house because um, my future ex-husband, Tom Brady, is coming home. And of course, my other future ex-husband, Justin Trudeau, is now in isolation. So I had a good opportunity to clean the house to be a good host for my future ex-husbands. Let's see what else we have. Do 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 do. Ah, here's Albert. It was it was so good to meet you in person, my friend. And I know that you're expecting your sister to join you. Is that so in the near future? So I hope we'll we'll have a chance to cross paths while your sister is here. Let's see what else we have. Boom bam boom boom boom. Bear Week, fun on the beach yesterday. Yes, there's a lot of bears walking around. There's uh, international bear event, and then there's a Mexican bear event going on this week. Uh, is my shoulder feeling better? I hope it's healing. It is healing, Suzanne. When I take it off, when I take off the, the bondage thing, I still hurt, and I still hurt when I change my shirt, but it is definitely feeling better. I am sleeping better. Somebody sent seven nights of continuous sleep my way on Saturday. So I woke up Sunday morning feeling grateful to whoever or whomever sent that gift to me. Uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, Jonathan had a wonderful dinner at Oregano, a Caribbean restaurant in Versailles on Saturday night. Lots of other restaurants nearby that I plan to try. Jonathan, let me tell you that um, Oregano is one of my favorites, and it is a great place, highly recommended for anybody that has not seen it. And you are correct, there's a bunch of really amazing uh, uh, restaurants in the vicinity. Let's see what else is going on. Javier says, going to the Naval Hospital as soon as your show is over. I'm going to La Lija tomorrow, but I'm going to go print my paperwork today. Brian reports going to Los Cuentos Tap Room yesterday. So good. Two for one beers. Ordered both the bean and the chorizo gorditas. Delicious. Had a few rounds of beers and the chef sent out a couple extra. No charge. Snacks. I am so very happy to hear that, Brian. Um, you may recall we went there a couple of weeks ago and absolutely loved it. Raymond, it was great to see you yesterday. And uh, I'm so very glad to see that you connected with Albert. So wonderful. Let's see what else. 
<laughs> Joan says Netflix needs to make a show about Seapal. Too much drama. But it's not good drama. At least, you know, if Seapal made a show, uh, it should be better drama than what they're going through. Uh, let's see what else. Let's see what else. Do -de 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 Lots of whales off the coast of Bucerías visible from the show. How wonderful. That is great. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Brian and oh, somebody asked about the location of uh, of Oregano. Brian says Versailles. Yes, and yes, Oregano is on our Versailles for Foodies map, which is available for everyone. Um, then I'm reading your comments about uh, Spotify and uh, and Neil Young and Johnny Mitchell. Yes, yes, yes. Two Canadian treasures, says my friend Michal. Um, and apparently other musicians are joining. Well, it's be interesting to see what happens with that. Curious, what is the price for Spotify? Well, then, if you go to Spotify.com, I'm sure you will find the answer to your question. Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 yeah. Absolutely. If you don't like the podcast, don't listen. Yeah, I have a Spotify membership. I don't like what... Uh, this gentleman represents so i don't listen to his podcast i listen to others um let's see what else lynn comments just like the funicular to the mirador absolutely you know and this relates to our issue of uh, our commentary on local corruption i mean a, a past administration installed a mirador I mean, a funicular going up to the to to the Mirador in La Cruz, and it's never used, and it's falling apart because it's never been maintained. So, it is unfortunate. Uh, Christine comments: Since Mexico does not require vaccination proof to enter, many anti-vax come here for that reason. Now, being asked to provide proof to the party is annoying them. Too bad. So sad. You know. I was quite surprised to hear from a couple of people over the weekend that now people are going out saying, you know, remove that face mask from your face. And I think to myself, well, you know, it's a mandate. It is a mandate. So I have no problem with people having different opinions, you know, but it's like, it's like, you know, I am gay and I respect people that are not gay, but I don't go around telling my straight friends, hey, you know, you should, you should, you know, make the switch. So, you know, it's not, it's not kosher. It's just not kosher. Let's see. Oh, that is funny. Lisa was watching the talent show on Facebook and saw me in the audience. That is so queer. I love it. I love it. Uh, let's see what else. Let's see what else. Raymond says the medium salsa Atacos Revolution is amazing. You know, I was so tempted to ask for like a container to go it is that good it is just amazing let's see oh raymond makes a report from the sunday ceviche and aguachile festival it was a lot of fun and for us the best ceviche was the one with a skite at the toneless stand toneless stand i don't know that restaurant but i will definitely look it up at toneless restaurant i hope that's a typo because being called a toneless stand doesn't sound like a good name um but i'm glad that you went <laughs> i'm glad that you went uh raymond says eyes on earth was fantastic that's the name of that amazing band they were so fucking tight and they were loud but not loud in an obnoxious way i mean you go to a rock performance you go to a rock band you can expect it to be loud it was it was just great. It was just great. Heather asks, why do you like to put on my baked potatoes? Lots of salsa and lots of cheese, without a doubt. Um, oh, Matthew says, did you see my silly Enrique Alfaro Harry Potter contribution? I did see it. And I was going to prepare something, uh, but I didn't have a chance. But now that you brought it up, Mateo, I'm going to explain. You see... Harry is a medieval way of uh, the name Henry or a, a medieval variation. And the word Henry in Spanish means Enrique. And Potter in Spanish means that it, you are somebody that makes ceramics. 
and somebody that makes ceramics in Spanish is an alfarero or belonging to the alfaro family. So ergo, the conclusion is our governor, Enrique Alfaro, is none other than Harry Potter. I love that. It was funny. And there it was. It was not funny in my delivery, I'm sure. But yes, I saw it and you made me smile. Thank you very much for that, Mateo. Anna asks, is a photo of one's vaccination certificate on your phone sufficient proof to, for, to enter a bar or whatever? The answer is, in my experience, yes. That's what I showed at the Palm. I showed a photo of my two vaccination certificates, which are sitting right here that I'm done. And that was proof enough for them. Uh, of course, I also have a PDF on my phone of my registration certificate, the official one, which is still incomplete, but at least shows my first dose. Let's see what else we have. Boom, ba -da -bum, bum, bum. Two weeks ago, my husband was at the Punta de Mita Hospital and they would not remove the IV nor release him until we gave them our credit card imprint. What can I tell you? Uh, I was in the Starbucks at Malecon and an unmasked person when told to put on their, her mask replied, I just want to ask a question. I told her it was a mandate and she finally walked out. Good for you. <laughs> Anyhow, that is uh, what we have. Thank you, Christy, for loving the Harry Potter story. I thought it was a little bit of a stretch, but it was a funny stretch. Anyhow, this is how we begin our week. So we begin our week with fun news, with drama. We begin our week with friends of ours performing and being courageous on stage and funny. We begin our week with things that we can look forward to. Do we have anything we can look forward to? Sure, visits to more restaurants. That's for sure. We can look forward to a more standard and regularized um, water service. I don't know. I'm just being an optimist here or trying to be one. Anyhow, this was what we have for today. Tomorrow we come back. Still no Taco Tuesday on a regular basis. Still no Walking Wednesday on a regular basis. Please forgive the maintenance work going on, but I am just itching to, um, to get back on the saddle of, of doing video and, and outings and this, that, and the other. In the meantime, I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your company. And I hope you begin your week as cheerfully as I am beginning mine. Have a great week. If it's your turn to go get vaccinated, please go get vaccinated. If it's not, uh, oh my God, and yes, the Charo Festival starts tomorrow. Thank you for that. If you have a chance, go, 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 go. What a great opportunity to, to witness in person one of Mexico's traditional sports. So stay happy, stay kind, stay connected, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay in touch. Bye. <laughs>